I was asked to make a beautiful wedding cake for a friend of mine's mom who's getting married. Now it's a small wedding, only 30 people, but she still wanted a two-tier cake. And I wanted to make it really simple and beautiful, so I'm doing a Corneli lace design. It looks difficult, but I have to tell you, it really is simple. If you practice just a little bit, but I'm gonna show you how easy it is. So let's get started. All right, I am frosting the bottom tier. I have, this is a white cake with a raspberry cream cheese, cheese filling and I will link the recipe down below. And now I'm putting a, my buttercream recipe on here. Now this is an outdoor wedding, so I chose not to do cream cheese in the outer part of this cake because um, where we live, out in the wine country in Southern California, it can get pretty hot. <laughs> and uh, so I wanna make sure that the cake stands up. So the bottom tier is actually only going to be a white. Uh, I'm not doing any string work or any detail on it. It's just going to be a real pretty white. So I'm going to go ahead and go around. And then when I get back, I'm going to show you how to stack the cake on top of another using some boba straws and then a center st uh, stick to make sure that when I transport it in the car, it's not going to leave me. <laughs> All right. Now I have a smooth cake. I just wanted to show you that when I get to the point where I wanted to get it really smooth, especially for a wedding cake, I dip my spatula in some warm water, not boiling hot water because you don't want to melt the icing, but just enough where I, when I lay it over, it's just going to be really, really smooth. If there's any little tiny bubbles or any little scrapes or anything, um, it's just going to clear it up. All right, and I'm going to show you how to stack a cake on top of another. Now I get use these boba straws, or you can actually use straws. Actually, Starbucks has a really good sturdy straw that you can use. Now I don't want to put on the outside of the cake because this is an eight inch cake I'm gonna put it on. Now actually I'm using those great Wilton boards that actually has a hole in it. Because when I used to stack cakes, we had to actually uh, use a pencil sharpener to uh, use these sticks to actually po poke it through, but now they have these holes through it. It makes it so much easier. So I'm just going to put my straws in like this, and then using a marker, just very carefully not to touch the icing, just make that mark. And then I'm gonna pull it up, and I'm going to cut that, look, you can see the layers of the cake. I'm gonna cut that mark on about five more straws, and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right, I've cut all my straws. Word to the wise, make sure you cut your straws away from your cake because I did that one time near my cake and one of the pieces of the straws flew right into the cake. And then I had to re-ice the cake all over again. So just find another place around the house to cut your straws. All right, I'm just gonna put these here just so I know that my cake is going to have something sturdy to sit on when I put it on. All right, we are ready to stack our next cake. All right, now I have the bottom tier done. I have frosted the top of the cake. Now what I'm going to do is I have a ruler here, and I'm gonna measure to see how wide this cake is after I frosted it, and it's exactly 10 inches. So I'm going to take off two inches on each side and make a little tiny mark so that I can make sure that I put the cake right in the center. I'm gonna do this on the other side. So I wanna make sure that I have it evened up. Just a little tiny mark, just so that I can see. Okay, I'm gonna go get the uh, cake out of the refrigerator. So I let the cake sit for just a little bit, and I'm going to very carefully Stick it on, making sure that I even it up, and let it sit on top of the cake. Now, my fingers have little indents here. That's okay, I'm gonna clean that up. And then I'm going to show you how to do this beautiful Corneli lace on the top tier. We're gonna just leave the bottom tier white because I'm gonna be adorning it with white roses when I actually get to the wedding, which I'll show you a picture of when it's all done. Let me show you how to do the Corneli lace. All right, so what I'm first going to do is I'm going to put that dowel right through the cake. This is going to allow it to um, hold 
as I transfer it, okay? And then I'll put a little dollop up there on top just so you can't see that. That's where the white roses are gonna go. And I'm just gonna use a number 16 tip to just go around the sides to just make a really pretty design, just going back and forth before I do the Corneli lace, um, just so that it's got an even edge. I'm going to put some white roses at the bottom of the cake, and that will make it look really pretty. One of the nice things is when you're working with a uh, wedding planner or even the bride, a lot of times they'll talk to the florist and the florist will set aside some flowers for you that match um, and complement the wedding and that way you don't have to go and buy your own flowers which can be kind of pricey and usually the florist just has some extra ones anyways. So now using my frosting and using a number two tip, it's actually one of the smallest tips you can find, Corneli Lace is really basically just a bunch of little squiggly lines that never overlap. So I'll go ahead and start on the top. Let me see if you guys can see this. Um, and you basically just go around and keep connecting. There's really no rhyme or reason and you just want to make sure the lines do not touch like this. As so I go around. I tried looking for the origins of Corneli lace and I could not find anything. Uh, the closest I found was that it was resonated from a dress, a wedding dress, and a decorator tried to emulate that on a cake. So I'm sure this has to do with some beautiful lace pattern from a dress and then someone started this whole pattern with wedding cakes which is just absolutely beautiful. It, to me it reminds me of like you know your grandmother's lace tablecloths and just laying it on the cake. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this for a little while. It's, it is time consuming, but you know, when it's a wedding, you wanna make it very, very special. All right, as you can see, I've completely filled the top tier with this Corneli lace. I'm just gonna finish up here, if you guys can see. Kind of hard to see on a film when it's white on white, but it's really elegant and really, really pretty. Just doing a little tiny overlap to the sides. Now, as you can see, I took my 16 tip frosting and I swirled it around because I'm gonna put the, the flowers on top here and I didn't want them to smush the Corneli lace. That wouldn't look good. Um, also, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. It's a hot day today. I wanna make sure it sets because the frosting has butter in it and it will set really nicely. A trick before you transport make sure your car is air conditioned go ahead and run your car sometimes I drive it around the block get it nice and cold park it pretty quickly and then get it in the car I don't want to put this cake into a hot car it's about 95 degrees where I live today and um, this whole entire design will melt in my car so I want to make sure I'm gonna also adorn it just at the bottom with some um, design and then I'll show you what it looks like when we get it set up at the wedding